Hello, everyone, and welcome to Election Speak Out. My name is Leah McMahon. I'm a business owner, author, and entrepreneur here in East County. Joining me this evening is Matt Wand, my state representative and personal friend. In addition to Matt's deep and abiding love for coffee at my business, Silk Espresso, I can tell you that he was born and raised here. He's a friend of my husband's, and to borrow from the Willamette Week saying, he does believe that East County is the center of the universe. I don't know that we can ask for much more from our state representatives. So Matt, tell us about your first term in legislation and some of the items you've been working on for us. Well, thank you, Leah. You know, two years ago, when I asked our neighbors to send me to Salem on their behalf, what I talked about was building a stronger community. Um, I believe that we are the center of the universe and that is my job to send that message to, uh, to Salem, but we can build a stronger community by focusing on jobs, uh, public safety, and education, and that's what I did. Um, in the area of jobs, we worked on the enterprise zone law and some other bills that we'll talk about. Um, in public safety, uh, we worked on an elder abuse bill. What we found out tragically is that uh, the elderly who are sometimes vulnerable and, uh, are, are receiving care, uh, we're being taken advantage of and that district attorneys and others um, that are supposed to be there to help didn't have the tools that they needed to help these vulnerable people in our community and we passed a sweeping change to that area of the law that will protect seniors in our community. Um, I was also proud to work on foreclosure reform. Uh, one of the things we know is that empty houses um, can often be a, a location for various crimes and also we know it's very tragic when uh, people are subject to foreclosure. We initially had a bill that came from the Senate um, that we knew from experience in other states wouldn't help um, the majority of folks that are facing foreclosure. So I worked on that bill in the House to do a couple of things. Um, uh, one of the things we did is allow a waiver for a $250 fee for mediation because goodness knows, uh, these folks don't have $250. That's why they're looking at a foreclosure square in the eye. And the second thing I did, I, I just believed strongly that any foreclosure reform needed to help everybody. And just this week, um, the state of Oregon put up their website for mortgage counseling, which was an idea that I championed uh, together with Representative Gene Wisnett. Now, this is funded by the settlement with the Attorney General. Um, it's, it's fully funded, and folks that are facing foreclosure can go and learn what their rights are. Maybe going to a mediation is the best thing for them. Maybe there's another option. But it's important for people in that situation to know what their rights are, what their options are, and we made that happen. Now, specifically on education, I know there were some very promising bipartisan reforms that occurred during your term. Can you tell us more about those? Sure. You know, I've spent a, a little bit of time in the Reynolds School District over the course of my life, so I'm a class of 93, go Raiders. <laughs> and I volunteered in, in, at Reynolds High School, and I know, just like most of the people in our community know, that. 30 to 40 students in a classroom just doesn't work. Mm -mm. And one of the reasons why we have such a hard time getting class sizes smaller is that we have unfunded mandates from Salem that cost money, but, um, but they never come with extra funding. And so we passed a bill that removed over a dozen of those um, just in the short session this year. And I was proud to support that bill. Um, we also know that in times of economic uncertainty, we kind of have these peaks and valleys mm -hmm. in education funding, and it's very damaging and harmful. So I promised when I asked for votes two years ago that the education, the K-12 education budget would be the first budget passed, and I delivered on that promise. That indeed was what we did. It gave our school district more time before the beginning of the school year to figure out how to make ends meet. Um, but we also knew that the general revenues weren't enough. And we have an education stability fund that is designed specifically for times of economic uncertainty. It requires a few extra votes more than the majority in order to use those funds. Um, but I voted in favor of that to make sure that we didn't slide backwards. Um, and lastly, you know, there's an issue of equity that I think goes on. It's one thing for folks uh, maybe that live in wealthier areas uh, to talk about school choice because if they want to go to a different school, well, they can sell their house even at a loss mm -hmm. and move someplace else. They have those options because they're a little more stable, but um, many of the folks in our community don't have those options and they don't have that wealth. And it just seems to me that every student has the ability to learn 
and that there is the right educational opportunity for everybody. And it's incumbent on us to pass bills and reforms to make sure that parents working together with their children can find the best educational opportunities, and we did that. That's excellent. Anything to add on achievement compacts? Yes, you know, the, the governor worked hard uh, to put down markers that, uh, that our parents, that our community members can read, and those are achievement compacts. Now, they're, they're working on them right now to put down in writing exactly where the Reynolds School District will be in the coming years, and I was proud that Reynolds is one of the districts that set some of the highest goals for themselves because that's how we know as parents and as community members that the, Re the Reynolds School District is serious about turning itself around and providing the best education for our students. And they did well, didn't they? I know job creation is a big catchphrase right now and you've had some good success for our region, but what can you tell us about what's being done to help address our unemployment? You know, um, creating jobs is something that, that is critically important in our community. You see, for years, our leaders, going back to when we were in grade school, were told that they had to think regionally. And what that meant is that oftentimes our leaders would make decisions that help people on the west side. Well, now it's time for the entire region to make decisions to help us because we have the available industrial land and we need, to help, we need help getting it developed. The Enterprise Zones law brought the FedEx facility into Troutdale, 700 jobs, family wage jobs that are good, strong, um, uh, stable. And uh, the Enterprise Zone law was set to expire. And so I was proud to work together with people across the aisle to extend it for another 12 years. But one of the things that I get to do as a state representative in addition to passing laws is help facilitate new businesses. And I help locate Pressure Safe into Wood Village. Uh, there's a, a dozen jobs there now, family wage jobs, um, and they're expanding. And that is build, we, we build in a stair-step manner uh, with that. And thirdly, you know, you really can't have jobs in East County without the proper infrastructure. And we, we had some funding for improvements at the I-84 interchange, but we were short. And so um, I worked together with Representative Matthews and others from Gresham and we were able to secure the final piece of that funding package. And they should break ground within a year, which will both create construction jobs in the short term, uh, but will also provide us with the opportunity to move freight through the Trotto Reynolds Industrial Park, which is what we need in order to create jobs there. So those are the types of things that I was working on. And, and there's one last bill that's near and dear to my heart. You know, we lottery sends money, economic development money, to the counties directly because it makes sense. The counties know where that money needs to be spent to help their communities. They're closer to the people. But for years, we couldn't figure out how they were spending the money. And there was no accountability requirements. And so um, we were able to pass a bill that requires every county to post online at the Transparency and Government website how they're spending economic development money from the lottery. And now we can go online and look and see what projects are being funded in our county. Uh, and I was very proud of that, and that's how that money really ought to be spent. Should be proud of that. Crime is a real concern in East County. I know as a business owner I'm concerned about it, and particularly gangs. Uh, what can you tell us about how you're helping to keep families in East County safe? Well, every two years uh, the state is asked to fund a multi-jurisdictional gang enforcement team. It's called, we call it MGET. Um, and every two years, it's a battle. And this year, Representative Matthews from Gresham and I teamed up on the House side to make sure that we didn't lose that funding because we know that Gresham and Fairview and Troutdale and Multnomah County working together do the best job to fight gangs in our community. Um, secondly, we make sure that the new courthouse has funding uh, for furniture, uh, but it doesn't provide all the services that I want it to provide. See, I, I don't believe that women in our community should have to travel downtown to get a restraining order. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's too far. And they have to take a day off of work when maybe they can't. So we'll be continuing on in 2013 to expand the services offered at our East County Courthouse so that people can receive justice here in our community. That's great. You're running for re-election. What should we expect from you? jobs, education, and public safety. I'll start with public safety. You know, we found out just a couple of months ago that some victims of the jogger rapist would not be allowed to testify at his parole hearing. And we also know that two years ago, um, one of his victims was re-traumatized 
by having to go through that process of, of testifying to keep him in prison and to keep him away from our community. And as I delved into the parole and the hearings process, I saw that there were some glaring errors. And so my bill is ready to go and we'll be moving forward in 2013 to protect our community from victims being re-traumatized and criminals being released too early. Um, secondly, on the area of jobs, we know that um, in the enterprise zone, there's an opportunity to create what we, what's called the Troutdale Ener Energy Center. And this is a facility that will create a couple of dozen new jobs at an average salary of $90,000. Now, when I first heard about that, um, one of the things I asked them was, well, where do you train your employees? And they didn't have a place. Mm -hmm. And so I suggested that they talk with Mountain Community College. And this is a national company, and we started to lay that foundation so that people in East County can be trained here to work at this facility. We also know that small businesses require money. They need mm -hmm. capital to hire employees. Mm -hmm. And so I have a bill that will encourage investment here in Oregon instead of investments in the stock markets. We're going to encourage people to sell their stocks and invest in the corner store so that the corner store, the small business that's the backbone of our recovery, has the opportunity to hire our neighbors. I like the sound of that. Well, if you'd like to support Matt Wand, please visit his Facebook page, Matt Wand for East County. We thank him very much for his time this evening. It's been fun getting to know how you're going to support us in District 49. You can also visit mattwanforeastcounty.com, and I encourage you to get out and vote this year. I'm very proud of you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thank you.